Good morning, everyone, and welcome to D4's Extra Life Charity Drive. We are the first game this morning. Thank you so much for waking up and joining us. I am your DM, Goblin Katie, and with me is an incredible cast of players. Um, we are raising money for Extra Life this morning, which is a charity that benefits the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. These are hospitals that provide care and assistance to the families for children who are suffering with major health conditions. So if you would please dig in deep, be generous, and help us make the life a little easier for these incredible children who are facing just insurmountable odds. I would like to take a moment and go around and introduce our wonderful players this morning. We're going to start out with Melodic Blue. Tell people who you are and what you will be playing today. Hi, I am Melodic Blue, family-friendly variety streamer, and I am going to be playing Arugula Fiddlefern, uh, an Eladrin, <laughs> an Eladrin warlock. Outstanding. And next up, Finn, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Finn Archer. I am a streamer, content manager, uh, whatever we need to be on. Uh, Chaotic Tiefling ATL. I also co-host uh, the Shakespeare Reads of What Streams May Come. And today I will be playing Squall, the Aracocra Druid. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Adam, would you please I am Adam yourself? Bradford. I am the Chief Development Officer at Demiplane. And today I am playing Rasmataz, who is a court jester fool that really has no business being here with all of these incredible singers. <laughs> so, I love, I love it. You're, you're definitely here for good reason. And while your, your screen says, Dustin, I know your name is Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hide. Yes, I am Nate, AKA Big B. Uh, I am going to be playing my very first D&D character ever. Uh, Almost five years ago, I played this character, so <laughs> I'm pulling him back out for this. I'm I'm going to be playing Dizrian, who is currently a Ghostwise Halfling. Excellent. And Omega. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Uh, I'm an active vocalist, tabletop professional, hot mess incarnate. Uh, and today I am playing Nineveh. Uh, she is a sea elf warlock of some sort. Excellent. Well, let's uh, go ahead and discuss real quick. We've got event milestones that we're attempting to reach throughout the course of today. Um, th well, the course of this drive. And our first milestone is going to be at $250, and that will be an Eldritch Foundry miniature. Eldritch Foundry makes incredible miniatures. They 3D print them, send them out to you. They are spectacular. I, I might have several of them. So that is going to be our event milestone to hit. After that, at $500, we'll be giving away a mystery metal set from Die Hard Dice. All of their sets are absolutely incredible, so you're, you're going to want to hit that one. But the game incentives this morning, for $15, we've got I Get By, which is advantage to the player of your choice. For $25, we've got Activate Accent Mode, where you choose a player or DM and pick a respectful accent that we will perform for five minutes. At $30, we have Wicked Game, which grants two disadvantage rolls to yours truly. At $40, we have Activate Song Mode, and you can choose a player or myself to sing all their in-character conversations for the next 10 minutes. At $45, we have Keep Rolling, and you grant advantage to the party. At $50, In Your Head, is Game Pauses, and a player of your choosing must sing their inner monologue for two minutes. That could get real interesting. At $75, we've got Rolling in the Deep. You can heal the party for 8d8. At $100, Get Back, Resurrect a Party Member. At $150, just a flat-out deus ex machina. You heal the party to full and resurrect all fallen party members. And at $250, we have the Ballad of the Bards, in which we will write a song about you or your character. Now, this will be delivered later. We're not going to deliver it during the stream, but... It will be phenomenal. We will work hard on it and it you will find it well worth your, your donation. So those are our donations and our milestones. And I think we're about ready to get started. Is everybody ready? 
Let's do it. Three All days right. we're going to be. No um, let's go ahead and set the scene then. Our party finds themselves in a beautiful, beautiful tavern setting. It's one of the finest taverns in all the lands. The chandeliers hang with crystals and candlelight glinting off them. And on the stage is a performer who is wrapping up their song. As they step down from the stage, this motley crew of performers who are all sitting within this building, all here to celebrate each other, applaud. And the MC approaches the stage once again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, theys and mother loving thems. This is your MC with no name speaking, and I'm here to make sure everything flows right, so don't you go messing anything up for me. Now, who is up next? Do we have another person looking to sing this morning? Anybody? Would anybody? Oh, I see a certain gentleman has put his finger on his nose. And since no one else did it, we're going to take that as a sign. That's Do you uh, have not a song? what I meant. Uh, not, not, not what I meant. Um, not, oh, oh, all right then. Well, let's see then. No one here wishes to step up and entrance the audience. I, uh, I suppose I could. You, you would like to very well. And what is your name, young lady? Arugula Fiddlefern. Well, Miss Arugula Fiddlefern, why don't you come up here and entertain us with a little bit of, of brevity? All right, she'll delicately step up to the stage and kind tell of us what she looks like. Shake herself off. Um, uh, she is of medium height, kind of a delicate build. Um, she has uh, a very vibrant colored hair that kind of kind of shifts in the light between like a, a, a gold and a, a reddish gold. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you'll uh, she's an elf, uh, an Aladrin, but you'll notice that she's very uh, kind of wide eyed, um, which is a little unusual compared to maybe the rest of the group that she's walking around in uh and and there's a there's a an innocence about her mm -hmm. <clears throat> believe in you miss fern thank you squall <sighs> whatever you do i do it too show me everything and tell me how it all means every something and yet nothing to me i can see there's so much to learn it's all so close and yet so far i see myself as people see me i just know there's something bigger out there i want to know can you show me i want to know about these strangers like me tell me more please show me something's familiar about these strangers like me every gesture every move that you make make me feel like never before why do i have this growing need to be among you all oh, these emotions i never knew of some other world far beyond this place Beyond the trees, above the clouds, I see before me a new horizon. I want to know, can you show me? I want to know about these strangers like me. Tell me more, please show me. Something's familiar about these strangers like me. Come with me now to see my world where there's beauty beyond your dreams can you feel the things i feel right now with you take my hand there's a world i need to know
Yeah. That was outstanding. Real In the quick, midst of her to... singing, tiny birds and squirrels form around her feet and like the squirrels form around her feet and the birds land on her shoulders. You might notice that Squall is like circling his uh, staff in the background, just kind of, um, you may or may not notice he's doing this, but squirrels and birds definitely flock around Arugula. Well done, Miss Fern, well done as always. Do we all know each other? Um, yes. Like, are we all here together? Okay, cool, cool. cool. Yes. Uh, well, actually, that's up to you guys. Um, I had planned for you two. Would you like to know each other? Oh, I know everybody. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, they may know me, but I don't know them. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, one note I need to make real quick that I, I was reminded to give that I forgot to give. Um, if you choose a donation option that has a choice, like pick a player or a DM to sing, please make sure to leave a comment and let us know who that donation is in reference to. Uh, that is an important aspect of the donation process that we're going to need to pull this off. So we did have one donation come in already for somebody to sing for the next 10 minutes, but we don't know who it or, Oh, wait, it, we know it's to me. Never mind. Okay. Well, then, anyone else want to give it a shot? Come on up here. Let's see what you've got. Anyone at all want to step to the stage? I can guarantee you'll be all the rage. Uh, uh, what is, oh God, what, I forgot what your name was, Finn. Oh no, Squall, Squall, that's what it is. <laughs> Squall, in your head you hear, um, do you need some accompaniment? If it's on the menu? Like, I, I guess I'm responding in my head as well. Yeah, yeah. And you hear and you hear it in your voice. Well, it looks like the donors have asked me to sing. Might as well go. Let's give this a fling. All right. I'm going to go up with him. <laughs> uh, this, this, uh, the, the, the next song's a very personal tale. Uh, give me your ears. I'll listen to me wail. I'll tell you a story that happened to me one day as I walked in salt marsh by the sea. The sun was hot, the day it was warm, says I, a quick pint wouldn't do me no harm. <clears throat> I went in and I ordered a bottle of stout. Said Hildy, I'm sorry, all the beer is sold out. Try rum or some whiskey, ten years in the woods. I'll try cider, I've heard that it's good. Oh, never, oh, never, oh, never again. If I live to a hundred or a hundred and ten. For I fell to the floor and I couldn't get up after drinking a quart of that Johnny Jump Up. After drinking that quart, I made straight for the yard where I bumped into Tommy, the big civic guard. Come here to me, boy, can't you see I'm the law? Well, I up with me fists and I shattered his jaw. Well, he fell to the ground with his knees doubled up. But it wasn't I, it was Johnny Jump Up. And the next thing I saw in Salt Marsh by the sea was a sobbing poor goblin and said she to me, I've not left to give but to sit here and cry. Adventurers beat me and left me to die. When I fetched her a quart of that cider so sweet, she cast off her cares and danced in the street. Oh, never, oh, never, oh, never again, if I live to a hundred or a hundred and ten. For I fell to the floor and I couldn't get up, what I'd drink in a quart of that jolly jump up. Now a man died in Salt Marsh by the name of McNabb. They washed him and laid him outside on a slab. And after O'Connor, his measurements to take, his wife took him home to a bloody fine wake. About 12 o'clock and the beer, it was high. When the carp sits at up and says he with a sigh, I can't reach Celestia. They won't let me up till I bring them a quart of that Johnny Jump Up. Oh, never, oh, never, oh, never again. If I live to a hundred or a hundred and ten. For I fell to the floor and I couldn't get up. After drinking a quart of that Johnny Jumper. 
job. Many thanks, many thanks to you, good people. I hope to see you soon. Be your pleasure here on the stage. Grant your players a boon. <laughs> well, I have to give a note real quick, if you don't mind. There's a little thing you need to know, so you're not in a bind. Just so you're aware, we'll be pulling raffle winners from chat in chat. So there's that. Now, is there anyone else who will take the stage? Anyone here we could sing for days? You don't have to come up if you don't wanna. But I can guarantee it's worth putting on a song. You see um, this uh, bluish, teal-skinned uh, elven woman um, wearing uh, a mixture of dark uh, black and blues uh, with a little bit of silver, uh, a nice, um, almost like fitted dress. It almost seems like it could be her skin, but it's not. Um, a couple of rings in her hand. She has a really nice um, talisman of sorts around her neck. Uh, she also has uh, hanging off of her side a, a, a conch of some sort. Um, bright white hair, bright white eyes. Um, she walks up to the stage and says, of course I'll be next. Hopefully you like my song. And as she begins to speak, there are these um, like trails of sound all around. I guess ooh, just kind of following her as she goes up. Um, and she goes, my name is Nineveh. I hope you like what I sing for you. It would be to your um, interest that you do. And uh, she begins as I do a quick thing. I'm sorry, there we go. His hair, it rings, it hangs in ringlets. His eyes are black as coal. My happiness attend him wherever he may go. Upon one summer's morning, I carefully did stray down by the walls of Wapi, where I met a sailor gay. From Tower Hill to Blackwall, I wander, weep, and moan, all for my jolly sailor until he sails home my heart is pierced by cupid i disdain all glittering gold there is nothing can console me but my jolly sailor boat my name it is nineveh a royal daughter's fair and i have left my parents and three thousand pounds a year come all you pretty fair maids wherever you may be who love a jolly sailor that plows a raging sea my heart is filled by cupid i disdain all glittering gold there's nothing can console me but my jolly sailor boat. Thank you. It is the, good that you clapped. <laughs> the MC takes his time reapproaching the stage. He walks up with an expression solemn and grave he approaches Nineveh trembling in his knees he applauds very softly and bows low as can be hmm. she like flip her hair and walk back down 
And she looks around for anyone who is not excited. There is a woman in the back. She sits alone. She is staring at you just as though she would chew you like a bone. She is unimpressed. She is nonplussed. She seems to think you nothing much. You see her eye begin to twitch as she slowly reaches for her conch, but nothing for now. I love you. Are you single? For you? We'll see. Oh, so you're saying there's a chance. (laughs) The the whole time, because Dizreen has been on the stage since, uh, since Squall, the whole time was gonna like help with that performance, but the whole time was just like, <laughs> and then realizes nobody else is on stage and just <laughs> scampers up. <laughs> Arugula is just like beaming with like the super big sparkly anime eyes. Like you can hear the wow in the background. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you oh. can tell that she is very much eating up all of this adoration right now. The MC walks up and says, is there anyone else? Anyone at all? I ain't going after that. Oh, yes, you are. Uh, well, uh, it, it, if you want me to, then, uh, then, yeah, I feel like I can touch the moon. <laughs> And then you Perhaps see the that the steps of the sea instead. Uh, I'll follow you wherever you'd like, Miss Nineveh. Uh, and you see that Rasmataz um, gets up, hops up from his seat, uh, goes up to the stairs on the stage, um, and then walks to the front of the stage instead and jumps up and rolls onto it and then pops up again on the stage and um then you see that he starts to cast a spell uh minor illusion and you see spectral instruments uh start coming in and uh begin to play and he says you're all in for a real treat here tonight i mean a real one because This is the greatest and best song in the world. (laughs) Tribute. A long time ago, me and my brother Kyle here, we was hitchhiking down a long road. When all of a sudden, there shined a shining demon. And he said, play the best song in the world, or I'll eat your souls. Well, me and Kyle, we looked at each other, and we said, okay. And we played the first song that came to our heads. It just so happened to be the best song in the world. It was the best song in the world. Look into my eyes and it's easy to see. One and one make two, two and one make three. It was destiny. Once every hundred thousand years or so, when the sun doth shine and the moon doth glow and the grass doth grow. Needless to say, the beast was stunned. A whip crack went his whippy tail, and the beast was done. He asked us, be you angels? And we said, nay, we are but men. Rock on! This is not the greatest song in the world, no. 
This is just a tribute. I couldn't remember the greatest song in the world, all right. No, this is a tribute. Whoa. What? 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop, stop the music. So, so confession time here. I mean, to be honest, I can't remember the rest of the tribute either. So uh, everybody have a great evening and be sure to tip your waiter. And once again, the audience begins applauding and excitedly clapping. Uh, Nineveh, you notice several of them are staring at you, just jaws still agape. And um, Arugula, this, this small child comes over to you and says, excuse me, um, can I have your autograph? Sure. You look like a princess. Oh, you're so sweet. Where are you uh, from? Oh, you know. Here and there. Oh, I I'm think under the an hour. Oh, I knew it. You are a princess. Sure. <laughs> oh boy, I got a princess's autograph. And they go skipping off back to their parents' table. The uh, the MC turns one final time to Disrian. Do you care to sing? No. Very well. Yep. Nope, I just hold up the, the loot and just point at that. <laughs> Understood. That's what I do. Well, in that case, if there's no one else, then and the door is thrown open. And a, a, a light mist sort of pours in from the cool evening as a man walks in. And he walks to the center of the room and looks around and says, Ah, yes, a gathering of performers. This is just the thing I was looking for. And he opens a small music box he's holding. And as he does, the room begins to spin and everyone begins to feel very disorientated. Something is happening. The room is twisting and turning and spinning and everything just begins to contort. And this cacophony of sound fills your ears. It sounds like the tinkling sounds of a music box playing, but it's not playing a song. It's just these discordant notes. It's, it's, ah, 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 And it continues in that as your vision gets blurred from all of the movement in the room. You feel a pull in your stomach as something is drawing you forward. And then it stops. And you open your eyes. And you find yourself seated in a clearing in a forest. Could I? So listen, I've I been on some benders before, but... Uh... Oh dear. Could I tell what just happened other than being transported? It it felt very similar to like a teleport type spell. Did all of the <laughs> did all of the uh creatures that were around Arugula come with us as well? <laughs> they did, yes. All oh, right, good. In fact, you see scattered throughout the clearing all of the people who were there. And everyone seems very confused. Wait, like the whole population of the bar was just yes just Love suddenly that. find themselves in the center of a clearing and as you look up you see instead of a sky you see slats of wood mm. and there's velvet lining the horizon never never is going to reorientate herself, stand up, look around. Someone needs to explain why I was transported without permission. It would be wise to do it now. Uh, I, 
slightly older woman stands up. I've I've heard stories. It almost seems like this might be one of them. There there was a man. My sister wrote me a letter. There's a man that came by Nimble Pop, my hometown. He he had a box with him. And he went into the tavern and everyone there vanished. I wait don't know what's happened, but it seems like it may be connected. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are telling me that you are from a town called Nimble Pop? Oh, yes, yes. Have you oh, heard of it? The box it? things is bad, too. The box things bad, yes. Yeah, yes. Have you heard of Nimble Pop? Uh, absolutely not. Oh, and we're whoever... well known for our tarts. Oh. I'm just gonna say what everyone is thinking. That's an odd name for a town. Well. It's not quite that odd. There are many things you don't, you possibly can't comprehend. That's fair. All right. The game is paused. Big B. You have to sing your inner monologue for two minutes. I saw that. Okay, in this moment? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, well, none of us staring at me. Uncomfortable. I am so very, very uncomfortable. She's staring at me, and all I can think why does she hate me? Uncomfortable. <laughs> she makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> her eyes are like daggers, but her voice is so pretty. Why can't she just be indifferent to me? <laughs> Uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Just over and over. Would you like a minute before you have to sing your other minute? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, if we could, yeah. I'll give you a minute. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the only thing I can think about right now in this moment, so. Got it. Uh, well, uh might be best to find out just how enclosed a space we're in uh, for the moment. Um, uh, uh, Schnicket! And uh, Swall is waving his <laughs> staff. <laughs> uh, and you see a very almost ethereal uh, little raccoon uh, come bounding out of God's knows where. Um, DM, he has just used his wild companion feature. To Got some of a uh, familiar, oh my uh, gosh. shaped like a little raccoon, obviously named Snicket. Snicket um, bounds up. Um, it, it, Squall is like prepared to hold him in his hands. He kind of just bounds right off of Squall's hand, off the top of his head, and lights on Arugula's shoulder. And he's like giving her like little like raccoon kisses and everything. Oh, Snicket, Snicket, Snicket. Okay, Snicket. <laughs> important job important job for you i want you to run as far as you can until you stop and come right back tell me how far we can get how big is this space snicket that's what we need to know wait 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 you're gonna trust something that important to the trash panda oh oh Oh, snick it, snick it, snick it. Calm down. Remember snick our talk. Snick is a highly qualified raccoon, I'll have you know. And I'll and if you want something known that's unknown, the trash is the best place to look. Uh, so, my esteemed regal panda of the woods, uh, scout forth, good fellow. He scampers down and goes scurrying off in the direction you pointed. Uh, Nineveh looks over at Rasmataz. Would you rather I have my pet look instead? I don't think uh, you would. What is your pet? Perhaps you'll find out soon enough. Oh, that sounds ominous and kind of sexy. 
just off off away from this conversation, you hear <laughs> All right, so a few minutes pass and uh, I'm sorry, Snick Snickles? Snick it. Snick it. Snick it still Snickles. doesn't return. Snickles. Snickles. It's Snickles now. Snick I, it. it might just be Snickles now. <laughs> it's got overruled on my own familiar's name. <laughs> Snick it doesn't return. Well, that's odd. I, normally he's back by now. Uh, and Squall closes his eyes to um, see through Snicket's eyes to see like where exactly Snicket ended up. Snicket is, you see Snicket is in a, um, some sort of building and he's, he's scurrying through it. Um, it, it's this giant ornate opera house. And he's kind of working his way down through the aisles toward the stage where a woman is singing. All right, uh, then Squall will telepathically tell Snicket to come back. He stops. Come back, come back, Snicket, that, uh, that's, that's far enough. I've, if you could lead us back to that opera house, that, that'd be the best. <laughs> and he comes scurrying. He turns around and starts scurrying back. All right. And then uh, Squall stops, you know, warding and opens his eyes, looks at everybody. Uh, apparently, Snicket either got distracted and couldn't find the exit, or there is no exit and only an opera house off towards that neck of the woods. So wait, since your trash panda had instructions to find the edge, if it never finds the edge, is it just going to keep running forever? Probably, yes. He just will just keep scurrying around wherever he was. He was quite content, it seemed, to look for uh, bits of concessions left in the opera house floor, uh, mm. based on what I could tell. However, uh, he is on his way back and could lead us to the opera house if it seems worth investigating. It seems like the universe is leading us in that direction. And so I think we should bite the hook. I'd like to see an opera house. Oh, biting the hook is tight. Wow, 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 This wow, is wow, where wow. I sing my aria. Um, and I forgot to add, say that uh, Nineveh does have a staff in her hand. Oh. Um, and at the end of it, it almost seems like a wave, um, a wave around some arcane orb. Um, but she says, but if we should go, we should go now. I would very much not like to be in a space where I did not intend to be. I she agree. <laughs> okay, so you do you wait for Snicket to come back or do you just go ahead and start walking in the direction that they like? Who the hell is a Snicket? I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose he'll meet us halfway if we take the <laughs> initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is a snicket? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> all right, so you all begin walking, and as you're you're passing through this area, you you see uh, the woods begin to to thicken around you a little bit, and as they do, um, you see something off in the distance flashes red. So as this is going on, uh, Razmataz um, gets a little closer to Nineveh, and um, his wood thickens a bit, and um, it does what? Basically, uh, <laughs> and, and, and and basically says that. Um, oh, sorry, the woods thicken. Yeah, that's 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 what he meant. <laughs> um, and so uh, so as he gets a little closer, he's. I I, I know you already have one, but like, uh, is there any way I could persuade you to? You know, try out my staff, touch my staff. Hmm. And what will it give me? What use uh, will it do for me? Probably diseases, but uh, <laughs> but no, uh, it, it'll probably give you great joy and fulfillment. I've heard those kind of things require attunement. <laughs> you have to hold it for quite a while. If I touch your staff, you need to be ready to jump into this abyss. Will you be? I will dive headfirst into that abyss. 
can we go into Dizrian's inner monologue right now? <laughs> yes, yes, we can go into Dizrian's inner monologue. You've got one minute. Literally, just standing in between the two of them, this kind of look on on his face. I'm just like, this is weird, very weird. I hate you. <laughs> Sexual tension. I could cut it with a knife. <laughs> Where is this going? Who is this guy? <laughs> and what kind of diseases are on his staff? <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough of that. She will touch the tip, just the tip. Curious to know what exactly he wants her to touch it for. And um, as uh, Nineveh touches just the tip, um, it actually, uh, you see that it starts just shooting off fireworks. I hate um, everything about this. And, uh, <laughs> and says, see, it's, uh, it, it, it protects me, but it also has a lot of kind of what I'm named for, Rasmataz. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and she'll like pat your head. And, go. and he uses minor illusion to turn completely red. I probably I can tell that's an illusion. Uh, I went I high enough for Kana. Uh, I guess, oh, cute. I prefer blue. And she'll walk off. He immediately turns it blue. But, um, <laughs> but she doesn't say it because she walks off. She kind of turns her back. And as soon as she does, he's like instantly looks like a blueberry. <laughs> All right, so as you're walking, you, you see that flash of red once again off in the distance. And the woods just sort of sound quiet. There's, there's very little sound to them other than the crunch of your feet on the leaves. You can hear the occasional animal scampering. The, the atmosphere is, is, despite being someplace you don't want to be, it's it's actually very pleasant. It's it's almost climate controlled, frankly. It's it's a beautiful day. The air is crisp, but not too cold. It's it would be pleasant if it weren't for the fact that you are here against your own volition. You see that flash of red again, this time closer. And what does it seem like? It it's just like it it looks like something red is moving through the trees and so you catch glimpses of it as it happens to come between parts in the trees sighting sparks in the sky but i can fly twice as high i'll go investigate you guys just stay here and wait and then the squall just jumps into the air nice. uh goes to see if he could uh ascertain the um location of the sparks you said they were like through the trees above our heads yes okay so no squall... no the uh, i'm sorry no it was on the ground it was through the woods oh so squall like tries to get a uh, literal bird's eye view uh mm -hmm. to try to find out what's happening uh below and so uh looking by the way one... by the way did we leave the the rest of the bar patrons wherever we got dropped off Yes, they, they're all just kind of sitting out there, just kind of stunned and huddling together and not sure what to do. Yeah, you know, the NPC army, we will be here until you turn your back again. Yeah, li <laughs> literally, like, as we're walking, like, Dizrian stops mid-step, and is just like, oh, they'll be fine, and then keeps going. <laughs> yep. Looking for sparks, I'm looking for sparks, try to see what goes on in the dark. And so he's like looking around. Try, what 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 can Squall see from up here? Can he see the from, from up there? Squall Squall's kind of flying for a minute. There is a canopy, so it's a little hard to see through. But at one point, there's a part in the bush in the um the treetops, and he sees that red moving through, and it looks like a hood and cloak. Oh. Uh does he also see Snicket from up here? Because, like, really, where did where did the raccoon go? Um. Well, actually, that's a good point. From up here, he sees the um past the woods. There is a city. It looks like, and at the pretty much dead ahead of where they've been walking is this giant marble opera house. Okay. Very well. Uh. 
back to my friends to tell them the news. Hopefully Red Sparks won't give us the blues. And he just like kind of nosedives back, um, yeah. like lands like right behind Dizrin with a thud. Just thump. he drops his pipe on the ground that he was just <laughs> just sitting there, just sitting there smoking and clatters to the ground. He picks it back up. Many sights I've seen, many tales to tell. A man walking through the woods looks like a beast from hell. A cloaked and shadowed figure shooting all red sparks. And yonder in the distance, a city in the dark. There's a there's a demon in the woods. I wouldn't want to give it labels. Um <laughs> I I you know, each individual can identify their own alignment, celestial, infernal, fey, as you wish. Oh, yeah, um, that's fair. Yeah. Just, you know, gave a very dark aura, very dark, very dark energy. I'm really not sure how long uh, the donation for singing has gone, but a gentleman grim, we might investigate him, uh, but beyond the... Beyond the wood, the city, I don't know, could be good. Uh, and a marble opera house. It could be that there's a phantom in the opera over there. Oh. Could be this guy. And you point in a direction? Yes, I, I point I point where I see uh, both the hooded figure and the uh, city are off in the same direction. Um, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to, uh, you know, repack my pipe. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you have one of those as well. And then I'm going to about face and just walk away in the direction <laughs> that's quite pointed. <laughs> just like, nope. <laughs> um, knowing that there's the opera house or whatever there and there might be a demon in the woods or whatever this may be um Nineveh just kind of slams her staff on the ground once as the waves on it begin to move and then there's a, a ripple that comes over her as she just sings a little ah, um, as she casts mage armor on herself very nice, very nice. What does your mage armor look like as it cloaks you? Yeah, uh, it almost seems like a watery wave that starts from the bottom and goes upper body. Um, and then as it goes up, it kind of like coalesces. Um, it kind of seems like it dries out on her skin, but it really just kind of goes into her. Nice, okay. Mm -hmm. And so as yep. Raz sees this, he pulls his staff out and slams it into the ground. And then he casts mage armor on himself from mm -hmm. the staff. And he basically uh, does his best to make it look like what Nineveh just did, but fails very, very badly. It looks almost like <laughs> pixelated uh, and, and everything else as the waves are coming up. And then it gets to the end and he puffs his chest out and says, nailed it. <laughs> Budget animation. <laughs> Quick question, Goblin. Yes. Um, when... Uh, in regards to the singing the internal monologue, yes. is the person singing it aware that they're singing it? No. That they're singing out their internal monologue? No, it's in their head. Okay. It's just in their it's head. It's strictly in their heads. Yes. Nobody else can hear it. No. C cool. Okay. I just want to double check that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. after, yeah. after they do those two things, Desiree's going to be like, oh, that was so cool. He's going to pull a, pull a book out from his back um, and just start writing in it. Okay. Yep. All right. oh, you're, you're, that, that, that's a good point. There, there could be danger up ahead. Miss Fern, stay close. And he like pulls a shield, pulls the, the shield off his back um, that he was carrying. Um, I swore to protect you, and I'm just doing the most. So, uh, like waves over Arugula and like walking with his shield out and his uh, staff ahead. All right. So as you as you are preparing yourselves, you hear the sound of a twig snap and you see that red again and around a tree comes a little girl. 
Oh my goodness! I didn't expect to find you here on my way to Grandmother's house! Oh, hello there. Hello, hello. little girl. Hi. My name's Red. What's yours? Arugula. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Arugula. Wow, you're all very different looking. I don't often see people like you in the woods. Well, you know, anything can happen in the woods. Stop this. Stop every ounce of this. <laughs> the puns. The puns. They're too much. <laughs> Where are you off to? I believe we're headed to an opera house. Oh, boy, that sounds really neat. I'm on my way to grandmother's. I was just going through the woods when, well, I started hearing things. So I, I kind of sped up a little bit. What did you hear? Well, it sounded like snorting and, and growling. Oh, yeah, that was a wolf. And it's wolf. probably going to eat you. Yeah. What? Wait, what? Wait, wait. Yeah. I don't like I mean, the sound that's of what that. They do they they eat things? That is not necessarily true about wolves. I've known some very nice wolves in my day. Uh, I, I've I've read it like in five different places, so it's got to be true. Ah, uh, wolves get horrible press. It's 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 true. The their 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 portrayal in the media is just far flung. But little girl, uh, you live here. Oh, I live in the village a little bit away from here. Oh, so so it's always here. This is not just a, a, a magical dream sequence. A what? Fair enough. That 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 works. I, I'm frankly confusing myself at this point. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. You're one of the people that just appear here, aren't you? That happens You're not from often? here. That this explains is a lot. This is a normal thing? Oh, yeah. The people who just show up here, yeah, they usually don't make it very long. Oh, why is that? Well, because they're not used to our way of doing things. What is your way of doing things? <laughs> well, first off, you have to be musically inclined. Because when danger strikes, a lot of times, you have to sing. Oh. Oh, good thing that some of us can do that. Yeah, it is. Otherwise, he he removes you. Well, who's the he that you're talking about, dearie? I, I don't know. It's just this big hand comes in and scoops people out if they don't perform well. A large hand mm -hmm. that snatches poor mm -hmm. performers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's outrageous. I mean, hasn't he heard of consent? You don't well, go around touching people just because you don't like the sound of their warbling. Why are no, you doing I that agree. with your voice? I, I really, I, I, I really can't tell you. And it just began in the middle of, there's something about these forests. I don't care for it. They're kind of swampy and dark and murky. And I, I can't, I, I feel, <clears throat> I feel a bit, I'm gassy about it at all. It's just not, it's not on every bit of it. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Weird things happen here. It's just the way we are. Apparently, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not going to be sad about seeing the outway, the exit, that is. And as you're talking, something shifts and suddenly you're in the dark. Uh-oh. I wasn't supposed to be here after dark. Well, the wolf's going to eat you for sure now. Oh, no. I don't like the sound of that. That's the fastest sunset I've ever seen. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Weird things just happen here. Ah. And in the distance, you hear... I immediately jump behind uh, Squall. Oh, goodness. Are the wolves different here? Oh, well, sometimes. I mean, at night, yeah. They, and what um, should we expect? You should expect werewolves. Oh. Cute. Wolves where? There. Here. Oh, I see. 
but I, I need to get going. I, I can't be here in the dark. Can you take me home? No. Oh, we don't have time for that. Where is your home? It's it's about three hours that way. Oh, well, Which, hours. Is that is way in, in the, the direction same? we're going? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Hey, good luck, Rith. I, I, I'm afraid three hours is much longer than we have to, to stay in your realm. Um, it's, it's not too long for us. And you see a group of five werewolves have stepped out of the woods to surround you. We'll take her home. And we're going to pause as CB, it's your turn to sing your inner monologue. <laughs> This is rude. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see what I can do. Uh huh. Why are there wolves around me? Why must they try my patience? Why do they think they are relevant? They will find out what's my station. When my pet comes out to play, they will cry and moan. My pet, he will be happy when they are dead and gone. Now this group, what an interesting, hmm, one, two, three, four. Will they be useful to me? Can they do what they, mm. this one with the book, he seems funny, useless. What will he do when his body is bloodied? And this one, she sings with the animals around. But when Squall is gone, can she handle herself? Or will she lay dead on the ground? And you, oh you, dear Asmataz, you have quite the stick, but not for my ass. There are things around us, will your tricks be worth it? Let us find out, or well, sorry. I don't know what else to say. That was that was brilliant. Bravo. Picked a horrible time to take a drink of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the werewolves have penned you all in and they're standing around. You can see them salivating. There are five of them. And they look at you. We'll take the girl. You can go on your way. Can I do something? Yes. Can I say, or alternatively, and I'll cast mass suggestion. Okay. <laughs> and I believe that's a wisdom saving throw. Okie dokie. <laughs> oh, I need dice. No, I'll just use- First I'll dice use... roll of the, uh, of the day. Right? <laughs> we made it an hour in. Or an hour in, we haven't rolled yep. any dice. It's a musical episode. This is true. This is true. I'm going to say, or alternatively, you could eat some berries because they're better for you. She looks like she's pretty gamey. You know, it could do you well to, you know, get a little bit more, you know, nutrition in your diet. And I'm going to try and persuade them to go away. <laughs> what, uh, what is my DC? Uh, your DC is 18. Okay, that's one fail, two fail, three fail, four fail, five fail, that's <laughs> it. So they all kind of look at you for a moment and they're like... And I'm just like, eh? Mm. Ber berries, berries do sound tasty. Uh? Yeah, I never, never considered it. All right. Wait till they do something. What do you guys think? <laughs> and the all the walls are like, okay, yeah, all right. And so and they take off running towards the clearing that you all had been in previously. 
Yes. Oh, wow. That was really impressive. Thank you. Yep, you yep, yep. Go. Uh, yep, we gotta go. We gotta go. Yep, we gotta go. Yep, yeah, <laughs> uh, we're actually... Uh, 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 am I still accenting? I don't know. Uh, no, you're done. Okay. Uh, Disrian, how long will that spell last exactly on those wolves? Um, until they eat some berries. So we need to go. Oh, good. Well, I hope they find berries before they find the tavern folk that are back that direction. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Nineveh looks at the little girl and says, you need to leave. Okay. How long does nighttime normally last around here, little girl? Oh, it varies. Hmm. It's whatever he wants. He. Who is he? find out who he is. I hope you do. Truth be told, it's kind of a weird way to live. But I'm going to go because you scare me. And um, yeah. About how far that way is your home? About three hours. Hmm. Hmm. Bye. Any way I can help? Oh, I don't think there's Otherwise, you could help. That would be great. Uh, don't get eaten. I don't think this is strictly how the spell works, but if you will allow me, then I'll give her a 500 feet head start. <laughs> Are you going to catapult her? No, I was going <laughs> to dimension door her, but yeah. I think oh. I have to go with her. <laughs> that would be that would have been better though. <laughs> Did he eat this little girl into the woods? <laughs> or eat the child? Or I can modify her memory so she thinks she's already home. Oh. <laughs> Those are our choices here. All right. I, All right. yeah. I think the second one is a little dicey. <laughs> will you let me dimension door her? I, I will let you dimension door her, yes. Okay. Um, well, I can't. we can't take you all the way there. We got to go that way. But I can give you a head start and at least put you on the other side of the wolves. Uh, oh, and, great. and I'll just I'll just push her and the portal opens up and she just <laughs> I'll just go. <laughs> Not okay. this. Fabulous. So you you shove her and she go ahead and mark that spell off. <laughs> And it closes behind her. Oh, God. I wouldn't have known. Nineveh's already begun to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Nineveh is having none of it. I, 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 girl. <laughs> I look back and I have to dash to catch up with Nineveh. <laughs> I got little legs. <laughs> All right. Well, best not to be left behind, uh, Miss Fern. Follow me. And as he's walking, um, Squall... Uh, <laughs> takes his uh, staff, waves it uh, around his face. You see, um, like, green lights as he uh, says something in Druidic, and uh, his eyes light up green, and he's cast dark vision on himself. So mm. trying to make sure that, see what we're doing in here. Excellent. Um, as, you, as you begin to traverse the forest at night, it's definitely a very different setting. Um, the, the forest seems to take on a much creepier vibe you you see vines growing up trees that the vines are thick as your arm and they have hair growing off them and as you pass it you can't be sure but it almost looked like one of them moved and you continue along your way and you hear a, a shifting a great shifting of wood somewhere deep in the forest and you hear the padding of paws somewhere nearby. You catch glints of eyes in the dark. Everything seems to be turning around you. And nothing comes out into the open. It just all seems to be watching and waiting. And as you journey through the woods, you begin to see light up on the horizon, up where the velvet line is. You can see light illuminating that velvet. And as you travel forward, you begin to hear the sounds of a city. It's a bustling little city, even at night. You hear the sounds of carriages and horses. You hear the sounds of people walking down the street, body laughter, drunken songs. 
and slowly. Finally, we've made it back to civilization. Slowly, the trees thin out. And as you emerge, you see the city set before you. It starts out as these little farm hamlets, these small houses. And the lights are darkened. Some of them, some of them have fire still burning in the fireplaces that you can see through the windows. Mm -hmm. But it appears that everyone in this part of the town has retired for the evening. And so you traverse further and you start to make it into the city proper. And the thing that grabs your attention is this giant marble opera house with giant columns that rise up several stories to the roof and ornate red brocade banners hanging from below the balconies and windows. Well, this does seem to be the place we were looking for. Uh, um, Where's your little trash panda? That's exactly what I was about to ask. Uh, is there any way that I can sense um, where Snicket has gone or do I need to like kind of go warg again? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to warg again. All right, well then uh, Squall's eyes glaze over and he's try he's just sitting still trying to find where based on looking through Snicket's eyes, where is Snicket right now? Um, you see popcorn. Snicket is sitting inside one of those uh, popcorn <laughs> carts. Uh, he's got like his, his belly is sticking out and he's just sitting there scarfing popcorn by the handful. <laughs> of course he is. Um, uh, can I see from the from the windows of the popcorn cart where he is in relation to the opera house where we are? Like, um, it it looks like the um he's probably in the lobby area because the you can see like the marble wall um beside him. There's uh, a chandelier that hangs down, and uh, it looks like a, a large opera house lobby. All right, uh, so Squall will um stop worrying come back to himself and well apparently uh snicket has made his way in and made his way at home so um if by chance we can't find our own way in perhaps uh my perhaps our little friend could pick a lock for us uh however i'm not quite sure this is the type of place that would be barred to us we seem oddly invited are we at the opera house? Yes, you are. You're standing outside it. Okay. Uh, yeah, she would just walk up to see if the door is open. The door is locked. Interesting. Rasmataz goes up to it and just <laughs> with his staff. Okay. All right. So you, you pound on the door and after a few minutes, the, the door opens and a very severe looking woman is standing there. Yes. I think we're guests and meet inside. And whose guests are you? Of... Ham. Ham? Apparently we were supposed to be looking for him. Like ham, girl. like the food that you No, eat? no, no, ham, not ham. We're looking for ham. Oh, him. I uh, oh, yeah, that makes way more sense. Um, yeah, we're his guest. You are sent for by him? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really more collected. See, si. well. That is the case. Then there is nothing for me to do but let you in. We were going to enter regardless. I think you would find that very difficult. I promise you, it wouldn't have been. Hmm. Well, in any case, she's letting us in anyways. <laughs> Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you. Yeah. You will not say that after you meet him. And she oh. opens the door fully. We'll see. And she'll keep walking. 
But now she's like reaching down for her conch and she's just holding it in her hand, almost like petting it weirdly. Mm. That's not disturbing at all. Cool. Nope. <laughs> all right. So you enter and find yourself in the lobby. And in the lobby, you see um, your your raccoon is sitting inside the uh, cart full of popcorn, just scarfing it down. Snack it. Come on, buddy. Not not the time. Not the time. It, it's... Let- we have things to do. I'm a, I'm a little bit afraid that, oh, okay, thank you. That's very kind. That's very kind of you. <laughs> and like, you just like toss it up in the air, snatches in his beak. You have, you have to train them. I had a familiar one time. And if you give them that much, you know, leash and, and let them do what they want to do, they're going to end up belly up in the popcorn container. So uh, you, you have, you have to train them. You've got to be firm. <laughs> Well, you, you know, I, you know, I try, but you know, I've got this idea about the creatures being free. Just creatures need to be who they are. And he's, well, he's him. Um, well, I guess that's true. That's why I don't have one anymore. Yeah. Uh, of, of course, of course. No, no one meant any offense. Um, oh, just, I. Yeah. Miss Fern, he, he listens to you I mean, better. All right, Snicket. We know that you're the most wonderful raccoon there is. And he climbs out uh, a little larger for his sojourn and climbs over and kind of scurries up arugula and sits on her shoulder and just sort of starts braiding her hair for her. Uh Honestly, whose side are you on? So we're in the lobby. Does it seem like a door or uh, like a double door or something to get into like the main yes. area? Yes, you see, you see against the the further wall from where you entered the opposite wall. You see several large double doors. Cool. Yeah, none of us going to walk that way. Okay. As you approach the doors, they open before you reach them, hmm. and you see in this beautiful opera house like golds and and white light and rich red velvets there's curtains over the boxes and they're all closed but there down on the stage there's a single light shining down and in this light sits a man and you recognize this man he is the one one. sorry no that's fine he is the one who walked into the t- the music house that you had all been sitting in the tavern at the beginning and had opened the box and he sits placidly on stage just staring ahead um hello come in come in i've been waiting for you i would like to subtly cast mislead Okay. <laughs> Razzmatazz just starts walking forward, like marching, and a little <laughs> bit of minor illusion, like dun 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 dun, and he's just walking forward. He's actually trying to um, he 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 plays the fool, but he's trying to distract potentially in case any of the rest of his allies want to prepare in any way. Okay. Do I need to roll like a sleight of hand check or something like that? Um, you are still far enough away that you can get away with it. Okay, uh, wonderful. You're, this is a big opera house and you're still in the lobby. So you're not, I'm assuming you weren't directly in the door. No, no. Okay, yeah. Then then you're far enough away you can get away with it. Uh, but I'm going to trail like 30 feet behind the rest of the group, the invisible okay. me. Okay, but okay. the but the you're illusionary me with the group. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it lasts, I think, up to an hour. Got it. I've been waiting for you. And what the best have always to do? find their way to me. Yes. And who exactly might you be? I am the opera master. I'm pretty sure your That's name a is terrible Kelly name. Butler. I don't go by my name anymore. What's the point? I don't care to be called by a name when I can be called the Opera Master. 
Our names can be tricky. No one can pronounce mine. That's why I go by Squall. Interesting. Aracolcra, it's very difficult to master. I see. Well, it's also interesting that you would be here. You don't speak like you have a singing voice. I could try to belt a few notes if, if you care for it, but- I would, uh, I would, yes, by all, all means. All things, okay. Um, um, my body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. Oh, wait, I have something for this. My body lies over the ocean. Bring back dear Bonnie to me. And he pulls out a, a pipe and blows on the end of it as if he's about to make, like, like he's about to use it like a horn or something. <laughs> and as he does, smoke turns into like bats and starts fluttering around his head. Well, that's strange. I told me it was a flute. That is not a flute. And you, how did you get in here? Well, I honestly just followed her, but the spark flute was supposed to work. Right. And you, and he looks at Arugula. Yes? Tell me. Are you worthy of being here? I don't know. What are your standards? I look for those with great vocal talent, those who can add to the ambiance of the music box. Well, I suppose I could, but I really would like to go home someday. Oh, I'm afraid that's not an option. You're here now. You're mine. You're my collectibles. Mm. With all due respect, I belong to one being, and it's not you. As oh. do I. I see. So, you're not going to follow the rules, then? I mean, I'll happily sing some songs, but... I, do, I belong to no one but my fairy godmother. Hmm. That's going to be a problem. Invisible Dizrian is going to start backpedaling. <laughs> uh, Neva believes Arugula can handle herself because don't know why I'm need nobody else, period. Um, but she steps next to her and she says, here's the thing. All you had to do was ask, and I would sing all day. But you didn't ask. You took. And I am not to be collected, not without consent. And so, now we have a problem. We do, don't we? Because if you won't perform, I can't have you in here, but I can't have you going around telling people what I'm doing. And so... Little opera man, what will you do? I am going to need everybody to roll for initiative. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I can, uh, per my, um, I got a D4 to this. I have, I have a talisman if I can do that, just you know. Eh. And he holds up his hand, and as he does, he uh, lets out a oh, and from the rafters, this strange creature comes floating down. It looks like a, uh, a, a sea snake and it's got fins that come out from the side of its head and it kind of slithers down from the rafters and comes down and wraps around his arm and then swirls around his form and comes to rest next to him. All right, and let me grab my pen. That's a danger noodle. We got a danger noodle. We got a danger noodle. <laughs> that is a dead pen. Why is that pen over here? Okay. And Dizriam, what did you get? Uh, I got a seven. 
Okay, arugula? Eight. All right. Nineveh? Nineveh? Ugh. 26. I don't know why I have this. <laughs> Finn? Uh, 15. And Razmataz? I uh, got a seven as well. Dizrian can go first. <laughs> okay. Even with halfling luck, I got a seven. <laughs> wow. Yeah, first one was a natural one. Second one was a three. <laughs> wow, rip. Mm. Should I should I roll for Snicket or for simplicity, should Snicket just go right after my turn? We're just going to have Snicket go with you. That's good. Also, just so everybody knows, uh, I, did, I do have the feet bountiful <laughs> luck. So if you're within 30 feet of me and you roll a one, I can use my reaction to let you roll again. Nice. Okay. Um, he steps forward and looks at the group and Nineveh, you get to go first. You see this man standing there staring at you with this creature that he has summoned to his side. Hmm. She looks and sees the, uh, the creature and if it is actually a sea snake or whatever, something like aquatic in nature. It's it's not. It, it's that's not, just the oh. best description I can No, give. that's valid. Because I'm like, hmm, interesting. Um, but uh, she sees this creature and goes, oh, mm, you have a pet. Allow me to introduce you to mine. Come out, come out wherever you are. I believe you're hungry. Come out, come out, come from afar. Let's have us a party. And as I speak, um, as I um, sing this, I bring the conch to my uh, mouth and I blow in it. And as I do, there is a um, almost like a whirlpool that forms in front of me as a large tentacle comes out. Um, and, and like looks around, says, oh, there you are. We have someone who doesn't want to listen. Please um, deal with my lightweight. As I use my bonus action to uh, invoke my, uh, what is it, the tentacle of the deep. Mm -hmm. And when it's summoned, it also can attack. Uh, and it's immediately going to look around and get smacked the hell out of this man. Uh, awesome. Or at least attempt to. Okay. Uh, it uses my spell attack against it. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's a 33. Um, that will hit. <laughs> uh, so that's going to do 2d8 now because it's a different. Uh, and its speed is reduced by 10 feet. I don't okay. know if it doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to do seven points of cold damage to them. Is it cold damage? Yes, cold damage. Okay. Um, and as an action, I will... Ooh, excuse me. Mm. Yeah, why not? Um, as an action... Ooh, that's mean. Oh, I'm not going to do that. That's even, that's even worse. Um, I will, yes, as an action, I will look at him with my staff in my hand and I just let out this almost like cacophonous sound that enters his mind. Um, can you make an intelligence saving throw? I can. Yes. That's a 17 on the die. It's going to be a total of 21. Oh, nice. It saves. Okay. Um, and I do not believe. Nope, it does nothing if you uh, save. Uh, wait, no, no, it takes you would take half as much damage. You will okay. take uh, three, eight, 14. What is this? 14, 20, 23, 25. 29 and a half is 14. 14 points of psychic damage. Got it. He kind of twitches his head to the side a little bit and looks at you and glares. I see. So that's how we're doing this then? It is. Finn, it is your turn. 
Well, I would love to make it my turn, but it seems like we have to pause if I'm reading oh, the goodness. chat correctly. Oh, we do. Yes. Um, by the way, party members, you all have advantage for one uh, use in this fight so far. And I'm going to have two disadvantages. So yay. Uh, but first, Adam, we have a request uh, uh, for you to sing Razzmatazz's inner monologue. Let's get two minutes. Two okay. minutes. <laughs> All right. So um, Raz has just observed uh, Nineveh uh, just in her element, um, un unleashing a creature uh, that uh, she's been calling a pet the whole time. And he is just enamored. And so um, he... Um, basically you see a scene that is a really really uh, nice room with a fireplace roaring you start hearing saxophones and then he goes into close your eyes make a wish and I'll begin the night for tonight is just your night we're gonna celebrate mm -hmm. all through the night pour the wine light the fire girl your wish is my command i submit to your demands i will do anything Girl, you need only ask. I'll make love to you Ooh. like you want me to. Well, and I'll hold you tight. Okay. Maybe all through the night, I'll make love to you when you want me to. And I will not let go till you tell me to. Girl, relax. Cause it's over, I'm gonna stop singing cause I think that I've made it to minutes. Yes, it was very short, but it was really good. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> that was incredible. That was amazing, well done. <laughs> I'm already submerged in liquid. Don't make me even more so. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh my goodness gracious. Oh boy. Raz, you don't know why, but you die in to try you on. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, <laughs> Ben, honey, you're up. Oh, I am I though. Um, so um, Squall kind of surveys the scene. Uh, he's seeing that you know things are going down. He does not quite know what to do, but he uh, decides might as well give this a try. He pulls out from um, a pocket uh, something like wow. Let's just see how magic this dart happens to be. Doppelflinger, go! And he produces what looks like a very shiny spork and just throws it straight at the, um, it's at, mechanically, it's a dart of warning, but <laughs> throws it gotcha. straight at um, the opera master's face. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be a ranged attack. Ooh, 18 on the die. So 26 total. Just oof. That hits. Nice. Then he does. Oh, uh, man, I hate that I flavored this as a dart. So that's such a small damage die. Every little bit counts, man. Hey, man, it was for the flavor of the game. <laughs> All right, Good so that is a uh, five damage. Got uh, it. Brother takes five damage to the face. I, I'm just kind of picturing the uh, the dart comes flying in and it sinks into his cheek and <laughs> he just kind of sits there with a the dart sticking out of his cheek for a moment. 
and he kind of looks down at it and reaches up <clears throat> and drops it. I see. Very well then. I suppose it's my turn. Rude. But well, before he um before he um finishes his turn though, Squall uh tossed the uh, doppelflinger and then um uh you see him cross his arms on his chest, reaches them back out and a uh a hawk emerges from his back uh and it's not a real hawk it's a see-through kind of glowing hawk um uh, uh squall has just summoned a totem spirit and now this hawk is uh basically circling this gap between the opera master and the party and uh because he covers a uh 30 foot radius um so uh, about how far are we from the opera master right now um i would say at this point you're probably 30 feet away all right so he so the the um the hawk moves to get um the opera master in his uh 30 foot aura uh while staying on the party side of the opera master and squall takes to the air uh and flies just above uh arugula and okay. that's that's squall's turn okay the opera master stands up and cracks his knuckles and reaches into his pocket and pulls out a uh baton and he reaches his hands up and begins to look like he's conducting something and he opens his mouth and from his mouth pours this silver fluid that hits the ground and as it does it begins to coalesce and forms into a large large number of swords and daggers and just razor sharp blades that begin to pour forth from him and it goes pouring up the aisle that you all are standing in and i'm going to need everybody to make a dexterity saving throw including the airborne one uh, not the airborne I don't okay. believe. Let me see how tall this is. Uh, no, you are just out of height. I have a question. Yes. Is this a spell? It is a I spell. I have the same question. Ah, counter spell. Outstanding. <laughs> but it is at fifth level, so you tell me if I need to roll for it. Um, yes, I'm going to need you to. Well, actually, okay. it's sixth level, so. So, yeah, I have to roll for it. Yeah. Cool. Great, great, great. Here's the thing about... Uh, Counter spell when you fail or when you have to roll for it, it is an ability check, and people don't realize that. So I can add a d4 to it because I'm a talisman warlock. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm, let me sorry, one second. Uh, it is my spellcasting ability, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a 13 on the die, plus five, plus blank, plus two. Uh, makes that 19. Yep. Nope, 18. You, Math, you 17. It. What is my... No, oh. 18. No, 20. It was a 20. It's Pick enough. a number. Pick a number. <laughs> <laughs> I am a singer. I know five, six, seven, eight. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere between 16 and 20. <laughs> um, it's 16 so yeah. 20. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, you do. You do counter it. And he stops and he kind of grins and nods and reaches down to the creature at his side and gestures to all of you. And it takes off into the air uh -oh. and it is going to swoop towards, um, um, I can never remember Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Someday I'll remember it. Nineveh. <laughs> he swoops towards Nineveh and attempts to wrap itself around her mm. so let's see here ouch i foresee this being not good um i'm not kidding i just crit that's fine crit me <laughs> crit, crit me crit oh wait, wait i have disadvantage though disadvantage. Oh! Oh. and the next one is going to be uh 23 23 hits yeah Okay. Better Not a crit, though, that. so I'll take Better that. Right? 
Mm. All right, I am like, one. I will always root for the DM to like destroy. So destroy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to take 22 points of damage and you are grappled. What type of damage? Um, it's going to be bludgeoning. Okay. Because you said 22? Yes. Cool. And I'm grappled. Cute. Yes. You're grappled. <laughs> Thanks for touching me. Yeah. All right. And that is going to be his turn. For uh, next is going to be Arugula. <clears throat> All right. Well, Arugula is not happy uh, with how he is behaving, and she gets this this firmness about her face that you haven't seen before. Don't hate me, CB. Shimmer and glitter, dear lady. Silver and gold rain down on me. I need to scold this toilet. Um, she is going to cast Crown of Stars. Ooh, excellent. Ooh. Okay. So uh, these seven star-like motes of light appear uh, and orbit her head. So she's mm -hmm. got this radiant crown now. Um, and uh, as my bonus action, I'm going to send one of the motes uh, streaking towards the... Um, the, mm, let me, let me hit the thing that's, uh, that's wrapped around Innova. Okay. Must help saying friend. Um, do, and that is an attack roll, I believe. Yes, it would be an attack. Mm -hmm. Twenty-one. That will hit. Yay! Kaboom! Kaboom! Ba doom! Two, three. Ah. <laughs> Is it dead? Uh, no, but, uh, you know, it's, it's 17, 17, uh, radiant. Got it. Um, so now there's only six moats going around my head. Uh, Excellent. I'm also shedding bright light in a 30 foot radius and dim light for an additional 30 feet. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Very nice. Dizrian, it is your turn. Okay, feeling like I really wasted that mislead. I really thought I was going to cast a spell. Um, <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> in hanging out with these people, do I know who is like... Are any of us like melee fighters? You no? know that I'm not melee, but you know I am very resilient as far as how much it needs how much you need to actually hit me. Okay. So I, like to, I like to get pretty close. In a pinch, Squall uses his talent. But I'm not a melee person, though. Okay. Dope, 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 dope. Um, Okie dokie. I am going to... How far is actual Dizrian away from the party? Um, you said he was hanging back about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. So Okay, so 30 feet away from the party, and then how far is that from uh, Mr. Man? 60. 60 feet. Okay, cool. In that case, I'm going to, my, uh, my illusionary self is just going to run like straight at him. Okay. And then I would like to cast Bigby's hand from actual me. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> On brand. Wonderful. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as <laughs> The the idea being the illusionary Dizrian is just going to keep running at him, and the Bigby's hand is going to be right behind it, and so he's just going to run through him, and Bigby's hand is just going to hit him. Nice. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, that is, that is the goal nice. here. Lovely. Uh, Bigby's hand. <laughs> I'm going to roll for to hit. Give me a roll to hit. 
The most powerful hand spell of all. <laughs> Wait, I mean, Mei Chan is pretty good too. Yeah. Mei Chan is is. You can give you a wet so willy. many situations. I yeah. mean, Rasputin already has it. Let me stop. Whoop. Ah, ah, there it is. Whoop. <laughs> Rolling. Oh, that's really bad. Can I use my advantage? Yes, you can. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Roll it. Those that's... advantages are handy, folks watching. I'm just saying. That's bad. Uh, that's a 19. Oh, that's that good. is exactly what you needed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Onk. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, damage, damage. Give me damage. There we go. Uh, that is going to be 16. I believe it is force damage. Okay. And uh, yeah, this was uh, what is it? Clenched fist. The punching one. Yes. Yes. yes clenched yes. fist. Uh, and then the hand is just gonna float there, and is just gonna make a really rude gesture at him that I'm not gonna do because we're streaming. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just gonna hang out there. This we big old purple hand. Today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just gonna float there and just yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice win. <laughs> oh, a very rude hand. There. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. And uh, he kind of reels back like that and shakes his head and looks at the hand and all right. And now it is Rasmataz's turn. All right. Uh, Raz is going to move uh, forward just you know very very carefully. Uh, you know, kind of in between things, the yeah. snake is wrapped around uh, mm -hmm. Nineveh, and uh, you see that uh, Raz uh, comes up to Nineveh and um, says, there must be some way out of here, said the joker to the thief, there's too much confusion, I can't get no relief, and you see that uh, reaches out and you know touches in an appropriate place shoulder um Nineveh and cast free freedom of <laughs> movement freedom of movement nice. uh which is going to render Nineveh uh immune to the restrained condition that comes with the grapple mm -hmm. uh and uh then uh Raz is going to stay uh you know there and say I was I was so impressed by what you did. Uh, the pet was as impressive and as advertised. You've been talking about it the whole time. It was so great and uh, bardic inspiration to Nineveh Aww, as well. Nice with the bonus action. So I need art of Rasmataz and Nineveh, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Clearly, this needs to happen. We ship Literally. it. We ship this. <laughs> so that is a, a D10 on the bardic uh, inspiration. Oh, very nice. That's a good one. Oh, also, I read this spell, but uh, fake Dizrian is gone, and I am now visible. <laughs> okay, got it. Yep. Um, we This brings us back to the top of the round. So, Nineveh, with your inspired self, it is now your turn. Bet. Uh, sorry, this hair was making me mad. Uh, no, uh, I understand. <laughs> I was like, stop it. <laughs> um, it's like, especially when I can see it in the back being a butt. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. Um, Anywho, so now Nineveh, knowing a freedom of movement, I would just kind of, so that's like a, 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 li a liquidy film that kind of comes over as I use five feet of my movement to get out of this creature's space. Okay. And go, don't touch me again. Um, and as it says that, my mm, mm, action economy, action economy, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, as I say that, um the uh tentacle leaves this water, leaves the uh the opera master and kind of goes back into its hole and immediately reemerges right next to this creature and attempts to smack it for touching me. Uh that's going to be uh a 19 to hit. That will hit. Cool. That's going to be uh, ooh, 15 points of cold damage. 
Okay. And its speed is reduced uh, by 10. Okay. Um, and as I look over at the Opera Master, um, I will... Yeah. Um, I will slam my staff into the ground once more as the, begin the top of it begins to glow with a blue uh, tint and three beams go towards him as I cast Eldritch Blast. Okay, and this is cast? Yeah, this is my cantrip. Yeah, I'm casting this at the ocean, at the uh, Opera Master. Okay. So yeah. Um, that's going to be a 23 to hit. That hits. Uh, a 25 to hit. Hits. And a crit. Oof. Yes. Um, that is... Oh. What are the crit rules? I always forget. We're game. we're gonna do uh just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna do double max. Meaning double max damage. So take your max damage and double it. Oh. Yeah. Is Crits that including are a big deal, yo? Just the the double on just the rolled dice or double overall? Uh double on just the rolled dice. Okay, 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 okay. So that's an auto twenty plus Twenty uh eight. What was that? Uh twenty-eight, thirty-six plus fifteen Whew. is fifty-one. Fifty-one. Fifty-one points of force damage. Um and with each hit, his speed is no, that's a lie. Yeah, no, no, that's not a lie. Each with each hit, his speed is reduced by ten feet. Uh okay. no, also that's a lie. Also it's only one to each of the turns. Uh, so his um his speed is also reduced by ten feet. Okay, uh, got it. If he moves, got that. Say hey, wow, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Lance of Lethargy. Wait, it says once on each of your turns, <laughs> not on okay. each blast. Mm. Ooh. Great. Ooh, Nineveh. Action surge. I will. No, I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> no, no, I draw a line. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's something she wants to do, but he needs to be in a very specific uh, state for it. Yeah. So <laughs> it might happen later. We'll see. Oh, right. uh, let's see. Finn, you're up. All right. Well, Finn will um, see this giant snake thing uh, doing its thing and will dive for the giant snake. And Aarakocra, as you know, have uh, talons on both their four hands and their feet. Yes. And so uh, as Squall dives on um, the snake, he will uh, flex his feet and you see the claws get it grow longer. He's casting um, primal savagery. Okay. And so those claws will uh, attempt to, like he attempts to go feet first uh, into this snake. Very, I mean, he's just recreating the Mexican flag. Uh, bird holding snake gonna kill uh, right now and so he's just swooping down tries to grab the snake in his claws for an attack roll of 24 that'll hit nice it's doing very good today all right and then um is it corrosive or it's acid yeah you know um acid damage so Ooh. it's a nine. Nine. Wait, oops, I was rolling the wrong die. Nope, okay. Never mind. that didn't happen. It's not okay. a d12, it's a d10. But I still rolled a nine the first time. Nine. Two, so 11, and another nine. So he takes uh, 20 acid damage, the bird he does. And okay. um, as he does this, he holds his uh, staff in the air and, well, I can't do, I can't cast two cantrips, can I? Nope. Um, so he's, uh, as a bonus action, he will uh, yell, go for the eye, Snicket! And Snicket will jump up onto um, the snake. Uh, so in the next person that attacks the snake will have advantage as Snicket is using the help action. Oh, I love that. that. Nice, nice, very nice. Okay. That's you, Dan. All right, it, the, the Opera Master reeling from that uh attack from uh Nenva is uh 
pulling his baton to the side and he kind of rips it this way and a wall of flame starts to shoot up the uh the the aisle once again and i'm gonna counterspell it okay i need you to <laughs> okay i will just do this at third level i'm old and now uh, what do i add my spell modifier Oh, that's not great. That's not great. That's a, that's a 13. Unfortunately, the spell succeeds. Mm. So I'm going to need, let's see, everybody to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Oof, 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 oof. As seeing as I have lit upon the snake, same thing? Yes. Uh, I can add a d4 to this as well, because I can do it to saving throws. Uh, what are you? Squall crits that save. So did Rasmataz. I did. Nice. Not, but I got a uh, 22. 19? 21. Uh, everybody passes. So let me get your damage. Hang on just a moment. I just want to say I've been sleeping on Talisman Warlocks, Talisman Pact. And it's actually really nice. I'm, I've <laughs> actually been, been eyeing that while you're playing it. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, because I can, I, um, I can uh, add a D4 to uh, ability checks and saving throws. Not all the time, but for the most part. That's, that is really good because normally yeah. like, traits like that only give you on saves or checks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Getting both is nice. Two, three, four. All right, everybody. Well, one's a one's an invocation. The other one comes with it. Sorry, but oh, got it, got it. Six fire damage. Six fire. Mm-hmm. Warrior. And ah! twelve radiant. I did not Ooh, roll well at all. Oh, that was flame strike. Uh huh. <laughs> did not. I was like, I'm thinking it's a wall of fire. Nope. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> so eighteen damage overall. Yes. And that's both halved already, right? Yes. Okay. Oof. Glad we saved. Damage. Glad we saved. <laughs> yeah. <Jeez. laughs> and I've rolled terribly. <laughs> keep doing that. I will. I'll just for you. I'll keep Thank doing you. that. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and now it is the snake thing's turn. And it is going to it is going to go after uh Finn. Very well. Wait, no, you've got it grappled, don't you? I the, the the spells Private Savagery doesn't grapple. I just flavored it as he dug his talons in. Oh, so okay. he's just like on him. Got it. Okay. Well it's it's going to come after you. Fair enough. And let's see. That's gonna be a 24 to hit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, so Rasmataz is going to use his reaction for cutting words. Okay. And uh, I'm going to roll a D10 and subtract that from that attack roll. Sounds Ooh, great. Nice. What does he say? Uh, so uh, as the uh, serpent uh, goes to do it, he, he just steps forward and says, why don't you pick on someone your own size uh, in distraction? And uh, I rolled a uh, seven. Okay, so that's 24 minus 7. It's a 14. 14? That? No, minus seven, 24 minus 7. That's a 17, 17. which is exactly my AC. Oh! Question, question, question. Yes. Can you stack cutting words? That's a reaction, <laughs> and you already used your comma spell. You are. Oh, I did. I did. You're right. Yep. That's yep. exactly my AC. You brought him his attack roll right to my AC. Oh. oh. Well, luckily for you, you're only going to take 13 points of damage. Oh, nice. Ow, but okay. Was that like a bite? Was that what just happened? It was, yes. He, it, it kind of slithered around and bit at your throat and managed to contact, but it sort of pinched the flesh and you broke free. Ow, rude. Rude. So rude. All right. And that is their turn. Next up is going to be Arugula. Uh, Arugula is, um, for her action, she's gonna um, gather this like sparkling magic in her hand and kind of twirl and fling uh, 
basically Eldritch Blast. Uh, she's going to fling two of them at uh, two of them at the Opera Master and one at the snake. Okay. Uh, that's a 27. That will hit. Uh, oh, uh, that is a nat 20. Let's go. That will definitely hit. Oh. <laughs> uh, and a 17. That will not hit. That will miss. Okay. Oh, but it, are, you're attacking the Opera Master? The first two went at the Opera Master and the last one was at the snake thing. Is the snake thing in the hawk's aura that I cast earlier? Is well, you, you get advantage on the snake thing anyways, because Snicket's helping you. Oh, that's true. Sn Snicket did go for the eyes, and so Snick Snicket was using the help action for anyone who attacked the snake. Oh, that's true, yeah. So you roll with advantage on that. Does an 18 hit the snake? The 18 does not. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Tried, Thanks, we Nick tried. It. it was a good try. It was a good job. <laughs> okay. So for the first one, seven. Okay. Uh, the second one was the crit. Okay. So that's the base die times two. Yes. And then whatever modifiers. Yes. 23. Okay. Uh, and then the last one didn't hit, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. And then I'm also going to, as my bonus action, uh, send another, uh, I'm going to send a Crown of Stars uh, Sparkle also at the uh, Opera Master. Okay. I'd like to use my advantage. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. That's much better. Um, <laughs> 25. <laughs> That hits. Awesome. And because I don't have four D12s. Oh. Uh, D &D oh. Beyond. Oh. D&D Beyond is handy like oh. that. <laughs> That's not bad. 22. Very nice. Okay. Next up, Dizrian. It's on you. Okay. He is not uh. looking, the Opera Master is not looking good at all. He's not looking good. Eating. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm going to make Bigby's hand go like this and <laughs> just walk a walk a walk a walk a slap. <laughs> okay. I will ask you a question. I, <laughs> I must, think you say to the face. I must ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll the hit. And I'm going to hit him. Smack him. Oh goodness! Oh. <laughs> so nice. Eh. Yeah. There we go. Oh goodness! I don't have advantage on this guy, do I? I th did you already use your advantage? I did already use my. Uh, my hawk totem is still. Advantage. My hawk totem is still in place around him, so it, I okay. can't grant you advantage with my reaction. So boom, you get re advantage on that. Wonderful. Slap okay. slap. That was real bad. Oh, that was that was a little better. Uh, thirteen plus ten is twenty-three to hit. That hits. Woot. So, so the first attack whiffs, but the hawk like just grab the hawk spear just grabs the hand and. <laughs> 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 whack. No, I'm doing the little waka waka thing, and the hawk is like, no, this way. This way, <laughs> over here, buddy. <laughs> uh, here comes the damage. Here comes the damage. Uh, that is 18 full damage. damage. How much 18 was it? 18 damage. 18 got your damage. Got uh, your damage. And, and then for the bonus action, I will inspire Arugula. You've got a D10. Yay! Um, and... I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to look over at Arugula after I do that, and I'm just going to be like, your name's really fun to say. And that's your inspiration. <laughs> and that's that, what inspires you. And that is my turn. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, nice. Razmataz. All right. Um, Raz is going to 
uh, move forward. And uh, where is the opera master right now? He is um, sort of staggered on the stage. Okay, so is, on the stage. All right, yes. um, excellent. So I am going to uh, move forward and... Uh, <laughs> He, uh, as he's doing it, um, he is uh, just kind of his uh, ambient magical energy uh, is, is crackling just a little bit. And he kind of rips the front of his shirt and uh, you see, you know, chest hair come out and, uh, and, and, and he starts just strutting up onto the stage. Ooh, and then he says, uh, you know, sweat running all over my chest. I don't quit. No, I just press harder yeah, than it ever did before. Going for the dreams that I had and store my mind. And I know that I'm making it. I got to get mine. Nobody's taking it away. No, because Raz don't play that. You got to get mine, boy. You better step back, please. And as he does this, he, um, he is going to slam the staff into the ground and destructive wave um and so i can choose anybody that is within the destructive wave to not be in it um so i am choosing all of my allies but um i assume the snack is not near the opera master right now correct okay that's fine um so going to uh do that and it's going to be half um it's going to be thunder damage and okay. then half uh radiance uh we'll go with radiant damage here okay all right it's gonna be 10d6 is it a save uh no no say oh yeah sorry 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 there is a save. yes it is a constitution save of 18 okay no nope. save just take all this damage definitely not saving i rolled a two all right uh Whoa. 36 points of damage got it Okay. He falls to a knee and holds up his hand and says, stop. I'll send you back. Just spare me and I'll send you back. Inside check. Too legit. Roll it. <laughs> Could I also please? Yes, you may. Considering who's next, technically. Yep. 29. 23. Very he nice. Is, wow. He is telling the truth. He is desperate. He is nearly dead. And he is he is making a plea to try to save his life. Not just us. You'll send back not just us. Your whole collection. Everyone who wants to go home. Even that little girl that gets eaten by wolves. Fine. Fine. Everyone who wants to leave can leave. But and Nineveh steps forward and she um, takes her conscious, she blows one note in it and looks at him and says and says and says, and says La, 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 And as I do that, and I don't care. I'm not going to kill him. I'm casting power word pain. 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 And describe to me what power word pain does. While the target has, if the target has 100 hit points of fewer, which I'm sure it does, yeah. it is subject to, uh, I'm not going to use the word crippling because it's ableist, yeah. it's subject to immense pain. Um, it can't move more than 10 feet. It has disadvantage on attack throws, ability checks, saving throws, other than constitution saves. Um, it's just going through it right now. Okay. And I say, this is for everyone you tried this time. Don't do it again. No, no, I won't. Just, just let me live, please. Oh, you will. Only because they said so, not me. What a sad little king of a sad little hill. And he reaches into his pocket or his pouch at his side and he pulls out a tiny music box. It's about this big. The one he had in the inn was about this big. 
This one's about this big. And he opens it up. And as he does, you hear the and everything begins to blur again and shift and contort and you feel that jerk in your navel again and you find yourself standing on the stage in the tavern you started out in and everyone just sitting in their chairs looking absolutely terrified and shell-shocked i apologize my dog has <laughs> things she needs people to know she wants to be at me a bar too yeah and everybody in this room's been through it yeah and everyone seems to be back who was in there when you left the mc stands up I, um, I, I, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, does, does anybody, anybody else? Let's just all go home. Let's, let's all go home. I think it's time to go home. Can we see, is, he, the, is the music box somewhere in the room again? Or is uh, it no, you do not see the music box. Okay. You do not see the man. Got it. Just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> Want to know if we could kill it with fire, but that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, <laughs> he's smarter than that. <laughs> okay. <fair. laughs> and that is where we are going to end today's game. And I would like to thank my wonderful, wonderful players. You guys were fabulous sports. Thank you for the singing. Thank you for the antics. Thank you so much. I want to send a very special thank you to all of our viewers and donors um we raised over 800 dollars, i believe this morning um which is spectacular um just absolutely wonderful thank you all so much it is so greatly appreciated Mwah. we will be doing um games all day so be sure to check back later today and uh we've got another game coming up in i think about what an hour i believe about an hour yeah yeah, we've got um, a game coming up in about an hour, and that is going to feature GM Ethan Mansoor, Robo Goblin, the wing, the wigged DM Bailey, who is our wonderful tech guru for D4, and the wonderful Raya Sunshine, and he will be running mm -hmm. into the game a Fate Core one shot. And if you go to d4extralife.com you can see their game incentives listed there so there are more incentives to donate and we've got more wonderful things coming up throughout the day so be sure to check back and all i can say is thank you players let's go around and tell folks where they can find you we'll start with disrian ah uh, yes i am bigby aka bigby's underscore hand here on twitch uh at bigby's hand on the twitter uh yeah I do, I do stuff occasionally uh you'll also see me in uh rock punch uh videos from time to time on the youtube channel and uh yeah i'm just uh out here doing stuff arugula what you got i am melodic blue family friendly variety streamer I am Melodic Blue here on Twitch and on just about every other platform except for Instagram. There, I'm Melodic underscore Blue. Wonderful. And Finn? Oh, hi. I'm Finn Archer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Bloodhaven Bard, and you can find me bopping around the Chaotic Tiefling uh, channel hosting What Streams May Come, our Shakespeare online reads, and uh, doing just whatever other uh, shenanigans we pull out. Uh, Utharian Legends, one of our uh, actual plays on uh, Chaotic Tiefling, is on brief hiatus, but we will be back uh, next year where I play with the illustrative Big B's Hand. Um, and before we sign out here, I got to point out before anyone uh, loses track, we have to, we're bound to write a song for Rhea now. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we are. I don't know if we said that out loud on the stream. Mm -hmm. I was, I was going to conclude with it. But oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. No, I didn't no, mean no, to, you're fine. Didn't I mean, mean to step on that. As it gets mentioned, Rhea just, is getting a song. We need to, like, at some point we have to debut a, a song for the amazing Rhea. Yes. But, uh, but that's neat. Excellent, excellent. Adam. 
I'm Adam Bradford. I'm the Chief Development Officer at Demiplane. We have very recently announced uh, Pathfinder Nexus, which is the official digital tool set for Pathfinder. And uh, we've got several other really fun, interesting announcements coming out before the end of this year. So uh, check that out, demiplane.com, pathfindernexus.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Bad Eye Adam. Wonderful. And last but not least, Omega. Uh, hey, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere at Critical Bard. I'm a full time, I'm a three fourths time, as I say, uh, Twitch partner. Uh, and I stream all the time, playing some Dead by Daylight. Also, do lots of uh, tabletop. Um, I also, I mean, don't take not to take away from uh, D4. I'll be appearing on DD Jordan Lee's um, stream tonight, playing some Vampire the Masquerade to raise money for Color of Change. Uh, yeah, you can catch me everywhere Mondays on Realm Smith. Wednesdays for Wednesday is the uh season finale of Dice Six Machina on Saving Throw. Star. Sorry, series finale. Um, and and yeah, oh, and let's get Wild Wild comes back next week. Woo -woo. Ooh, woo -woo. Um, on, woo -woo. on Saturday on my channel. So uh, be there. Uh, th that's me. Excellent. And I am Goblin Katie, aka Katie Downey. You can find me on all the socials at Goblin Katie. I will be appearing this evening and every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash rockpunchatl for the D4 game. It's sure to be a wild ride this evening, so I hope you'll tune in. Every Thursday night, you can catch me at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash mini terrain domain as I play with the Dawnbringers. And it is a wonderful character campaign. I love my character. Her name is Rolo. She is an erd. She is wonderful. <laughs> but I hope to see you there. And every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I Twitch, I, I stream on my Twitch, <laughs> which is Goblin Katie. <laughs> As I don't play, twitch on your stream. I twitch on my stream as I play <laughs> um, Final Fantasy XIV with the wonderful D and D Jordan Lee. So I we I invite you to come join us for a Sunday brunch most Sundays, and it will be delightful. But as we mentioned. The wonderful Ray of Sunshine donated and will be getting a song. We will work together on that and compose a song for her. And we will debut it at a later date. So mwah, thank you all so much for being here this morning. It was it was an early morning jamboree and I had so much fun. I cannot thank these players enough. Thank you so much to D4 for the opportunity. And everybody keep those donations coming in. We're We're working for a wonderful goal here. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.